thinking of investing, working, or starting a business in the cannabis industry? We've got you covered right here on Plant Problems. Hosted by Tony Frischconnect, Plant Problems takes a different approach to cannabis than what you're seeing and hearing from the mainstream media. Come along with Tony and be in the know about how to invest, work, or start a cannabis business. Let's get the show started with your host, Tony Frischconnect. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Plant Problems. This is your host, Tony Frischkinek. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I've got a really cool guest coming up here in just a second. But, you know, there is a lot of movement in very many states right now. I mean, it's really exploding. And it gets me more excited each day I see something coming out in the news. And I also like to dig into markets where there's, you know, still some opportunity. and However, competition is challenging and some states more than others. Of course, the states that are that have had more time to legalize and have medical on their books, those are seem to be where the competition is at, right? And there's also some comp, there's also some openings for the little guy and I still believe that even though California is one of those states that has a lot of competition, they're also look, they've also looked out for their, their growers. And we're going to have a talk with uh, this gentleman in a moment that's a, a local. He's a California. Uh, he's in California right now. And so he runs some operations. He's got a delivery system. They're running out of the San Francisco Bay Area, Fresno, uh, Tulare. Um, they're also Tulare County, uh, Ken County. And he started off in the legacy market. I, I love having these type of people on because, and when I mean legacy market, for those of you out there that are not familiar with that term, it's the, where the black market started. And I kind of like that term better. So I'm kind of adopting it at this point. But so let's just get to it. So our next guest, Juan Hernandez, he runs Central Valley Alternative. And he's in a, he's taken up some big spaces. So, so we want to hear about how he's doing it, what, what he's doing to make his business grow and, you know, how he's thriving in California. Cause it is a highly competitive market. Juan, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Good, good, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I, it's a pleasure uh, to have you on. I, I always enjoy talking to the guys on the West coast because there's they, they've got a lot of challenges always ahead of them. So thank you so much for being on. And Juan, why don't you share a little bit with us about, you know, what started you in cannabis? Where did, where did you start? Yep. Uh, started uh, when I was uh, 18. Um, me and my, one of my buddies, uh, we decided to, uh, to, to grow out in, uh, in uh, out in the country. Um, it's a, uh, uh, a place called uh, Squaw Valley um, out here in, in, in California. It's, um, we decided to, uh, you know, b- back in the Prop 215 days mm-hmm. uh, where... Um, For those of those, those of you guys aren't familiar with Prop 15, it was very, the most advantageous for the uh the medical market because there was really no regulations so it was it just allowed you access is basically what happened and the majority of california had been running like that up until uh pretty recently really so anyway go ahead juan continue yeah uh yeah it, it, you said it uh right you're th- um there it's it was pretty much uh as long as you had a piece of paper that said you could grow 99 plants, you could pretty much, uh, <laughs> you know, go wild. Exactly. Uh, so uh, we, we decided to uh, to grow four of those um, permits out in uh, out in Squaw Valley. And, um, um, you know, it, it was uh, I was I was 18. So had you ever uh, grown anything before? No, no. That was my my first time. Um he, he did. He, he kind of let me know, you know, what to do and, uh, you know, water them, but, you know, um, you know, cut the water leaves off. And Yeah. He was your mentor or teacher. He was teaching you the ropes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, it was a successful harvest. Um, and, uh, 
that was the first time I ever employed anybody, um, you know, once it was uh, trimming season. Yeah, because the days of uh, trimming season in California is a whole different animal. Um, you know, I've, I've heard s- dozens of stories of people would go through the Northern California area, uh, Golden Triangle, and they would go on harvest at the end of every season. And that's what they did for work. And um, yeah, it, it was pretty common. It was just like, and it was, you know, people just kind of drift through town, no one person, and they get them a job making 20 bucks an hour trimming weed. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much what it was. Man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was a, a, a very, uh, successful harvest. Um, I was, um, uh, I was very young. At, I'm still very young. I, I feel, um, so I, I really didn't know how to manage money or, uh, so that, that harvest, I yeah. put all that money. Juan, up. how old are you? So people know I'm uh 26. I've turned 26. 27. Yeah. Okay. So You've got seven years you've been in the industry. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Seven years. Okay. So, so he's not, you're not young, but you're not old. Um, you know, that's pretty amazing. So anyway, continue. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, yeah. So after, after that, um, kind of just, uh, kind of drifted around, uh, you know, um, uh, didn't really know how to manage money um you know started uh what started, did you do with what were you doing with your money that you didn't know how to manage it <laughs> and I, bought, I bought a a motorcycle that i ended up crashing okay um you know bought a bought just cars and uh christmas was was good that year <laughs> yeah. so uh you know it was just a, a good learning experience I, I feel but um i think uh you know, so once that, uh, that was the first ever, um, you know, business type thing that I did with cannabis. Um, so that kind of, uh, opened my eyes to, um, you know, Hey, there's, there's money in this, like, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, you know, whenever you go from, you know, paying somebody to, um, you know, do uh, work for you to, you know, back in the workforce yourself, it kind of, you know, puts in, in perspective, like, Hey, there's, there's other ways to make money than, you know, trading your, your time for it. You know what I mean? Time for money. Yeah. Um, so, uh, that, that, uh, entrepreneurial experience never died. Um, uh, you know, I, w- once you get a uh, different type of money, you know, it's out there. So you, you're, um, uh, feel like you want to pursue it. So you, it sounds like you were hooked. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, and, uh, so I, I continued working, um, up until I was in the workforce I, after I crashed my motorcycle, I, uh, I, um, I, you know, I messed up my hand, so I, I couldn't really do any physical labor. So I what had it was your side job, physical labor. Is that what you were working on? Um, it, it it was uh whenever i was growing i was growing and you know had a, a job at the same time but once i crashed my motorcycle uh later that year after harvest um i pretty much uh had to do something else uh mm-hmm. you know job to job trying to figure it out uh without having uh um you know knowing that i was hurt because I, I i didn't really get it fixed my hand uh, I had to uh, kind of fly under the radar doing uh, uh, jobs without the, you know, bosses knowing that I, you know, I was, I was hurt. So. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah. I, I Cause kinda, you couldn't, you couldn't afford to lose your job at that time. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Uh, so I uh, ended up um, working at a, at a, a cheese uh, company. Um, and. Uh, you were making cheese. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't, I wasn't making the cheese. I was, uh, just packing after it was the finished product. Okay. Uh, and, um, I, uh, I ended up working my way up to, uh, to QA, um, and mm-hmm. there, and, um, I, I did that for a year and I, uh, I ended up, um, getting laid off from that job. 
um because they I, I i remember they got a new machine that pretty much did uh some of the tests that we ran on those cheeses so i had uh i, I was pretty much replaced with the machine okay uh, so um but that you know that experience in the qa gave me a uh you know something to add on the resume mm -hmm. i applied for a, a different company and um and uh you know in the same uh, criteria um and uh, that's where I, I really started making some uh, some good money and and uh had some extra cash that i you know i i've, I've always wanted to uh continue in in some type of business um and um and that that was when the around the time where prop 215 mm -hmm. uh, it was still it was it was about to uh it had maybe a, I want to say like two year, no, maybe a year and a half before it went to Prop sixty four. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, uh, I, I saved up some some cash, and uh, you were growing. You were correct. You were growing the entire time. This was you had this these other jobs, or did uh, you stop? I, I stopped after I, uh, I harvested. So that was uh, just a uh, just one and ended up uh not growing the next year okay um and uh so yeah i, I just continued on on the workforce um how come, you, I, how come you didn't continue at that point you did the one and then you stopped um you know what that's a good question i can't remember what it was uh i think it was because squall valley was uh was too far from where i was working okay uh, I think it was just not the season because we were growing outdoor. So uh, mm. there would be some time, um, you know, between the next next season. But um, uh, so, yeah, I I, uh, I pretty much uh, saved up some cash and uh, I wanted to open up a dispensary, mm -hmm. a store. And uh, I ended up, uh, you know, uh, leasing a, a place um, in, in out here in the in and county lines and uh i was getting everything ready i you know i got my um the uh the shelves the display cases all that good stuff flour um cartridges um uh, you know it, it was i, I think uh, i'm pretty sure it is still now uh very accessible uh where you get you know if you don't know somebody that could get it yeah uh, everybody knows and so ended up um you know, getting getting some flour, getting some uh, some concentrates. Um, and why uh, did why did you decide to go medical instead of just going back to the the legacy side of things? Uh well, it was still legacy because I, I had no no license, no uh, no. Oh, okay, yeah, this is earlier earlier time. So, yeah. but so you're thinking it was two thousand and uh, 15, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, fourteen, fifteen around that time. Okay. It was a uh, probably late fourteen, early fifteen. Okay. Um. So uh, I was, you know, I was getting ready to open, and um, what did you need to open at that time? Uh, you needed. Well, now I know you needed a uh, city approval, <laughs> state approval, all that. Uh, but uh, you know, or oh, actually, you just needed a local approval, and I think that was pretty much it. Um. So how did you open at that time? Because it sounds like you opened up something. Uh, I didn't. I I almost did. Um, one of my neighbors, he had a, a friend or the, the the place that I had got where I was going to open up mm -hmm. the neighbor business. He had a friend that was a sheriff or uh, uh, something to do with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he was uh, he was cool people. Uh, and, you know, the. Um, the the cop he wasn't you know trying to uh you know kick the door in or, or or whatever he was you know that was his friend so uh but what he did do was um he contacted the county um and you know i, I you know the basically county said there's going to be somebody opening a store here soon yeah come yep, check them yep. out or something so he kind of sold you out a little bit huh? yeah pretty much so um I uh, ended up getting a, I was about to open, um, you know, I had, 
uh, barred up the windows. I, you know, did all kinds of things to that place. And uh, you had a lease in place, right? Yeah. 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 Luckily, it was a, I think it was month to month. I, I don't think I had any contracts like that, but um, I, I ca- got a call from the county saying, hey, uh, you know, we caught wind of what you what you're trying to do. And, you know, just a heads up, you need a, um, a, a, a permit. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you, you're not able to open pretty much. Um, so how, how'd that make you feel? Man, that, that was, a uh, I, uh, fucked up. <laughs> <That was crazy. laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, you had a lot, you had a lot of money invested already. Yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah. How much yeah. money do you think you had into it by then? Um, I mean, I think it was around 10 grand, but 10 grand back then was like, a million to me yeah so um it's all relative to your situation right yeah yep yep um so i was uh i was pretty much stuck with a lot of weed (laughs) (laughs) so So you've got so you've got you've got all this product you've got no place to sell it you've got no license so what's your next step what do you do uh, so I'm sure, uh, weed maps is a, is a very big, um, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, yeah, they've a, been around a while for sure. Yeah. If you so, guys aren't familiar with weed maps, just Google it. You'll be able to see they'll pop up all over the place. Yeah. So they, you know, I, I seen that they had, you know, a lot of listings, a lot of delivery businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, fucking might as well. I mean, I got to get rid of this, uh, you know, product anyway. So, <laughs> okay. I, I ended up, um, you know, uh, getting a listing uh, back then. You really didn't need anything. They, they weren't um, uh, as strict as they are now where you mm-hmm. need a lot of all that. Um, so, I, you know, I got a listing. And uh, while I'm still working, uh, I still work in my nine to five. And um, I, that's, that's pretty much how it started. Uh, that that was the start of uh, Central Valley Alternative. That's where the name uh, came about. Every you know, back in the Prop 215 days, you'll see a lot of uh, dispensaries have alternative uh, in their name. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, you know, Central Valley Alternative. That's that's where the name came about. Um, I ended up, uh, you know, just putting my listing up would get. Um, I, I'm a bit computer savvy, so mm-hmm. I created a, a website on Squarespace and, um, you know, through some research, I, I, um, also got our POS system, mm-hmm. uh, which is, you know, it, it helps you, uh, get your inventory in place and, and, um, uh, and, and, you know, pretty much just have a, a place where you could um, put your products where uh, it's like an online store. Uh, so I, I did those two things. I, I, I connected the website. Uh, I got the icon on weed maps and I just started, um, you know, pretty much uh, pushing that way. Um, so once you're, once you're switching over, you've had this issue of cities not letting you open up. Then you find weed maps. You start selling through weed maps. I take it your uh, online connection or a text or something like that through weed maps. Is that how you're doing it? That connection. Uh, so, I, or is I it through much, Squarespace? Did you have that all set up already? Uh, it was. I, I think I already had it set up. I I know I did because I never. Just this year, we started taking phone calls as far as you know, uh, people placing their orders through a uh, phone line. Um. So I already had the Squarespace website um, uh, going. Uh, did Did you find that the having the phone direct since you just started the phone uh, direct, has that been a big boost to your business? Has it just been a couple? I mean, what what have you noticed? I, I definitely seen the increase um, in uh, in sales um, and also people. You know, people want to know they're buying from from people. They, you know, it's not just a the website. There's people mm-hmm. on the side. So, um, as far as the customer service, it's definitely 
uh, helped out a lot. Um, I, I should have definitely done that a long time ago. <laughs> well, you, you got to grow in baby steps, right? It, it happens when it happens sometimes. You know, I, I, I look at this list of counties that you guys are in. I mean, not, you guys have a lot of coverage. Um, I was doing some research on you and it said you guys are extremely fast. How, how have you set up your system to be so efficient and how have you created that? So we pretty much set it up to where, um, I don't know, if, uh, the ice cream model is rings a bell. Um, uh, pretty much we, we have drivers, uh, that have product, uh, from them, uh, whenever okay. then, uh, on our back end, um, we're able to, uh, task those, um, orders to those drivers um depending on who has that product on them and um that that's 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 uh how we're 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 be uh, we're able to cover so much area um and uh being so efficient how big is your um delivery force that you guys have so right now we we serve uh, from Oakland all the way down to Bakersfield. Um, we have, uh, I, I, I don't know off the top of my head how many drivers, <laughs> okay. but uh, we, we have enough to, uh, to cover the, the whole area. And You guys and, uh, started in 2017? Uh, yes. So the, we, we, we started in- Central Chicago. Valley Alternative did? Uh, we started in 2016 when uh, okay. we uh, re really uh, kicked things off as far as the delivery service. Um, and um, what, yeah. are, what, what have you seen the benefits of strictly having a delivery service without having a brick and mortar? Um, I think it's less of a less of a risk as far as like people knowing where um you are i mean it's um so you, do you mean like security wise it's yeah yeah okay. uh, we hear you know stories of uh you know brick and mortars in, in oakland that got broken into during the riots and mm -hmm. and uh, just having a delivery business where you know people you know people don't know where you are is is very it's very beneficial but um you know, a dispensary is definitely in the works. Um, and, uh, Oh, you guys are, you guys are working on creating one right now, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. So we, uh, we recently just, uh, passed, uh, to a, a third phase of, uh, our local city out here. So we're, we're going to be getting ready to launch a, a storefront here pretty soon. Do you, you imagine you're just going to be doing one and then everything will kind of be delivered outside of that or are you planning on doing several stores or what's your what's your business plan moving forward um so definitely want to not just uh you know stay complacent in just one city um you know there's there's a lot of uh, a, a lot of opportunity in different cities mm -hmm. um i i personally have found that there's a lot of opportunity in um uh, in the central valley just because uh, it's the slowest um, place where things are barely turning over. People are getting rid of that stigma, whereas, mm -hmm. you know, San Francisco, you know, it's a lot more heard of. Yeah. So, um, you know, a business in, in the Central Valley will boom much, much more than a business in, uh, in out in, in the Bay or L.A. where, you know, it's a lot, a lot easier to get. Yeah, I, I, I think it's you know, talking to entrepreneurs and getting their thoughts and people that are trying to get into cannabis, you know, keeping that in mind. I mean, there's a lot of places that are where things are moving really slow that provide, like you just said, a lot more opportunity because people don't know the rules. There's still that stigma, you know, that's created. So, you know, they're keeping it out at bay as much as possible but if you can go in, like, so you've been working with the localities and mm -hmm. what have you learned as you're working with them, as you're, as you're working through these issues, what are some of the things that you've learned doing it? 
Um, that they're just like people just like us, man. That that's that's it. Um, you know, everybody as the uh cannabis is is more openly uh accepted, um, you know, city officials see that, you know, you don't hear about uh, you know, people going crazy, you know, um uh, smoking weed. It, it's it's uh so they they're aware that hey, you know, it, this is not as a safety hazard. Uh, we just, uh, I, I've learned that, you know, that they, uh, they, they're people too. They see, they're not, you know, they, they see what, uh, what, uh, what's going on in, in different cities and different, uh, and, and they, they, they're working with what time they have. I, I, I notice that cities, uh, sometimes, uh, it feels like they're working slow, but, it's they have a lot of things there in their agenda. It's not just cannabis. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely uh, you know I, I learned that uh, you know how, how you talk to to uh, to people to uh, uh, in in those types of uh, environments. Um, yeah, what have, what have what have you changed when you have these discussions with them when you're talking to like a local or city official? Um, I, I, I think now I could talk a little bit more uh, uh, through experience because I, I, I remember uh, and, and it's you, you have a lot more confidence because now, you know, you've been in the space. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I remember, you know, being, um, you know, 20 in my er earlier 20s and, and going to these city city hall meetings and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, trying to change their mind. Uh, as far as like, hey, you know, this is around the corner. Um, it'd be good to change your uh, ordinances and, and, you know, get on the ball. It, it could help, you know, bring in revenue for the city. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, back then I really I knew that was, you know, was was about to happen. But uh, getting that uh, voice that was was very difficult um, just because, you know, um, young. Yeah. Were they intimidating at first? Man, I, I, I remember the first time I went to go to a city hall meeting, I stuttered. I, man, I, I, I made a fool of myself, didn't get the point across. And um, it was, uh, it was definitely a, an experience. Okay. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, that's, that's, that's what it takes. Uh, if you're, if you're in a, a city where uh, things haven't moved, um, that's what it takes because that's that's what the big boys are going to be doing they're they're going into these local cities and and um you know helping change uh the narrative and uh, change those laws so that uh. they could open up businesses so uh you could do the same thing uh that's that's what i try to do whenever i was um you know i like how you said change the narrative and that's that's a lot of this is help craft the narrative and the, you know, to the, to the locals. I mean, I don't know if you, if you grew up in that area or, or not, but I know there's, when people start seeing Juan's face, they start seeing him show up to meetings. They start seeing him talk. Maybe he's not the most eloquent when it comes out, but they start to see you more and more. And then they start looking at you as a human and not a, like a criminal. Right. Right. Yeah, because I think that's that's the scary part for a lot of you guys that are um, either were in the black market or like I like I said the legacy market. Um, that's a scary part. That's a big thing to overcome. And I saw, I saw dozens of people not even make that move over. I mean, I'm I'm guessing you being back in back in that market you probably still have a couple of friends that you know they're kind of doing their own thing still and and you know they don't want to deal with the hassle that it is or the work that it takes to to become legitimate hey everyone excuse me for just a minute we will continue the rest of our conversation in a few seconds guys i want to thank you so much for all your support over the last year because without you i couldn't continue bringing you so much great content so thank you Today I have some exciting news that I can't wait to share with you. I have been working tirelessly for the last several months creating a brand new podcast. This podcast is all about the process of extraction and the equipment that surrounds the world of essential oils. 
Essential oils are in thousands of products we use every day, from lotions we put on our skin to our favorite soft drinks. And yours truly has the honor of hosting this incredible show. Guys, with essential oils, the opportunities are endless. We invite you to listen in and subscribe to our new show called Extraction Essentials. Come be a part and join me on this epic journey as we explore the world of essential oils. We'll be launching brand new episodes every Monday. You can find out more about our show by visiting ExtractionEssentials.com. See you guys Mondays. Now back to the show. Then there's the other side of this. How does it feel to be legitimate? Oh, it's uh, it, it's it's much a uh, better feeling to uh, you know, worry about uh, you know, employees and and uh, you know, uh, corporate uh, you know, decisions as far as like how you're gonna move your uh, increase your revenue, um, opposed to worrying about am I gonna get my door kicked in this mm-hmm. month, um, all that um. So it's definitely um, it, it, it's it's you sleep better at night um, knowing that um, you've got you've jumped through the hoops, um, you know, got license and, and um, you know, at, at the end of the day, that's that's what um, what you want, because you want something that you you could pass down to your to your kids one day, a business that um, it runs itself. And and, um, it, you know, it's better to be on on the other side of the fence and <laughs> worried about them. So you, you brought up revenues. Would you mind sharing with us what you guys did in revenue for last year as a company, just to gross revenue? Uh, I think we did. Uh, I, you know what? I want to keep that private. <laughs> okay. If my, my business partner would. Uh... I, I understand. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. What kind of growth have you seen um, in quarter one this year compared to last year, what kind of growth difference have you seen? Uh, we've definitely had to hire more drivers. Um, okay. we've, uh, we, we've increased a lot, uh, during COVID, um, we tremendously grew, um, just cause, uh, people were, you know, they didn't want to go, go out, uh, Are we talking line. double the sales, triple the sales. I, I would say double. Okay. Divorce. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, a, uh, you know, uh, you know, looking back, um, you know, whenever I, I, uh, was selling, uh, you know, pretty much out of my, my apartment, mm-hmm. uh, and now it's, um, uh, they're, they're, you know, it, it's been life changing. So selling out of the apartment, you obviously didn't have stuff like e-payments. I noticed you had that on your website. Can you share? Can you share with me how how the e-payments work and are they easy? Is it you know? Because I don't see a lot of people that have set one of these up yet. Yeah. So e-payments. Uh, we're working with a company called uh, All Thirty Six. Okay. We uh, we've been with them almost um, around the same time we got licensed. Um, and e-payments is pretty much um, uh, you connect your your bank account uh, with all 36, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it, it's pretty much an electronic transfer. Um, whenever you make a payment, um, it comes out as a electronic uh, or like a wire transfer. Okay, uh, so so are there any extra fees on that, like a wire transfer fee or anything, or do you guys pay it, or how does that work? Yeah, it's uh, I believe it's like two, two dollars and something cents. Um, it, it's small, mm-hmm. um, it, but it's pretty much uh, almost like an ATM fee. I always look at it like that. Um, and it, it's pretty pretty simple to use. To set up an account. Um, we'll send a a request pay request. Um, you know, you accept the, the request, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. So you guys have been doing this for a few years, then. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so with the e-payments and of course cash, what do you, how much are you seeing as a company? Is it more cash, more e-payments or? Um, I think, well, yeah, we definitely see a lot more cash than, than e-payments. Okay. Um, I, I think, uh, if we would accept debit cards, it would in- increase, um, increase that, uh, that difference. Um, 
Yeah, because through that e-payments, you can attach your credit card too, right? Uh, no. just bank? Uh, yeah, just the bank. It is, so okay. I, that's the reason why it's not doing as well as, as cash because um, people are iffy about linking their bank accounts to, you know, uh, to different, uh, especially with cannabis, you know what I mean? Um, it's 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 just like people are scared of cryptocurrency, right? They yeah. It's yeah. the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, once uh, once they're linked and and they know it, hey, it's you know, this is actually a safe, uh, you know, payment method opposed to cash. Um, you know, they they really just stick to e-payments at the after they tried it once. So, have you taken some of your quality assurance, quality control background that you've learned and applied it to this business? Honestly, I I always. Uh, thought about about that um early early whenever i was uh starting um the delivery business because um yes uh to, to answer your question yes um it, it just because of uh the the attention to detail that whenever you're in qa packaging expiration dates um uh all that uh you know i i use that to uh in in my the delivery business because um back then um there was a lot of uh like flour wasn't packaged so if you had your own jars and made it look you know presentable um you know it it, it uh it, it people notice those little things mm-hmm. uh, cartridges as well you know what black market uh cartridges look like opposed to like people it, yeah it, it's um you can look at you can look at the packaging. You can tell pretty quickly, like, oh, what's this, right? Um, so I, this this one question is just running through my mind. So, what what's your strategy with opening a store, and why do you need a store? Um, I think uh, having a place where um, where people could come in and and see the culture behind. Our company is very, very important because uh, I think uh, as a business, the culture within your company, there's a certain culture. And, and I mm-hmm. feel like um, we do have a culture, but people can't really see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, all delivery. Nobody sees uh, the person greeting you or or. Uh, so I, I feel like it's just the next step for us. Um, I, I think opening up a, a dispensary is is. Um, and then here in the in in the local city, um, I think uh, the I, I feel like the city um, is is gonna benefit a lot because we're we're going into a location where uh, that part of the the city is uh, definitely needs um, an uplift of uh, the surrounding area is is very is not really that, yeah so yeah. I, I think if there's you know, uh, somebody that's going to go in there and, uh, you know, make changes for the better. Um, it, it's definitely going to help. Um, so it sounds like you want to support your community. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's uh, there's a lot of reasons, um, why opening a store is, 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 uh, is, is an option. I, um, and you always want to grow as a company. I think uh, a mixture of ambition and and uh, knowing that you could help somebody out. It's 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 a just a mixture. Um, yeah. So you you had mentioned before you you have a partner, um, just one partner or more than one? Yeah, just okay. just one. Part. What uh, what part of the business is is your area of expertise? What do you what do you handle? Um, I think just the day-to-day operations, um, I think, uh, we, we've both created the system where, to where the business runs itself, mm-hmm. and oversee it, uh, see ways where we can improve. Yeah. Just day-to-day operations. Um, I, I think, and, um, uh, and you guys uh, both work on that together or does he run another part I- of the operation? Um, he, he handles a lot of the, uh, the, uh, purchasing, of mm-hmm. like, uh, the, uh, the products and, and, um, 
he, he's he's a he's he's a, one of my uh he, he's a good friend he's my mentor um he's he's definitely helped out a lot are you guys close in age or no is he a bit he, older he's he's a bit older not twice my age <laughs> he's gonna okay no i mean he nobody knows his name so yeah. <laughs> he didn't share it so it's okay <laughs> Yeah, no, he's uh but he's close to twice your age. He's like yeah. in his fifties. Uh no, he's I want to say maybe like thirties, forties. Okay. Uh, you don't know exactly. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, well maybe he's, maybe you'll listen to this 30s. and they'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh it, it's crazy how, how we met too. Um so as, as I was working my nine to five while mm-hmm. I was um uh, you know, getting the dispensary. Uh, he was actually uh, the plant manager for uh, the company that I that I worked for. The cheese company or the other company? Uh, yeah, it, it's that both of them were cheese companies. Okay, uh, they were both cheese companies. All right. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was this uh, young kid, didn't really know much about business, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know, he his he holds a very, very high title. I knew he had a lot of, uh, expertise and, or a lot of experience in, uh, in business. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's running a, a multi-million dollar company already. Um, so I knew, uh, he definitely knows something that I don't, uh, because he's, he's already, you know, uh, be- became successful and, mm-hmm. and, and I would go up to his, uh, his office and ask him for advice on, uh, on, on little business, um, questions that I had. And, uh, I would never tell him what it is because what it, what, you know, what the business was about, because it's, it was still, you know, prop to 15, it was still, uh, somewhat, uh, uh, illegal. So I just kept it as, um, you know, just a business. So, uh, one day I, I go in and, and, uh, given my, my two weeks notice, uh, you know, I, I, I told him uh, I was losing money by coming to work. And uh, <laughs> I what did up, he say to you? What did he say to you when you said you were losing money? Like, he was uh, curious, yeah. uh, you know, what, 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 what type of business is it? And, and um, I, I told him towards the end. And, and uh, after I, I quit, that was, uh, that was when um, things really changed. I, I feel like uh, if you're if you have a, a business and, and you work in a day job, mm-hmm. uh, quitting your day job is one of the scariest things you could do when you're when you're transitioning over to to doing your your business full time. So, mm-hmm. um, what's, I think what, what's going through your head when you're deciding to quit before you put your two weeks in? Either I'm gonna make it work, or I'm gonna go back to work. <laughs> so it, I, I want to give you this though. I mean, because I think it's a, I think this is a really big thing. Um, you're in your mid twenties. Uh, I can't think of a better time, honestly, to take a risk. I I did it through my twenties. Um, lots of different odd jobs, but it, it's something about now where you're at and you get into your thirties, you're almost so much further ahead when mm-hmm. it happens. Right. And, and I'm in my early forties, so I've kind of seen this progression. And what happens is all of a sudden it starts working and you're like, Oh, even mm-hmm. though, <laughs> and I'll say this out there. When I say working, you're able to eat, and you're able to pay your rent, right? I mean, that's <laughs> that's pretty good, man. Yeah. When it starts working, you're like, oh my gosh. I mean, how how did that change your your life? Um, I think uh, it was uh, it it didn't really change my life until 2019. Okay. Um, when we actually got licensed, uh, and uh, once we could uh, be out the shadows, um. Mm-hmm. It, we were able to be a lot more open we were able to put billboards and and um that's when a different kind of money came in mm-hmm. uh, where 
you know, you have a lot more eyes on you. You have a lot more clients. You have a lot more business. And it's not no longer, you're not worried about surviving. You, you can breathe better. Well, I mean, the opportunities that it's opened up for you have been, mm-hmm. I imagine, have been tremendous at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely uh, opened a lot of doors. And and uh, it, it, it definitely, uh, you, you start to notice people that... Uh, that have the same entrepreneur spirit and it, you know it the i'm gonna make this for work regardless of what happens you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. and uh, you know having those conversations with with uh, other entrepreneurs um you know it, it's it's different than having a conversation with a co-worker you're working next to that doesn't have the same vision same 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 ambition as you you know networking has has definitely helped out a lot in in our um uh, in in our personal growth um how do you pers- how, do, how do you do ne- how 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 does juan do networking that that's been successful for him um pre-covid um it was a lot more easier you mm-hmm. had the mj biscon um mm-hmm. you know festivals the uh high times um the, hey, you guys uh, have a lot of different events out in California, so I'm sure you just visited a lot of those, right? Yeah, yeah, and you know that's um, those events. Uh, you you could either just go and get super duper high, or you <laughs> yeah. could socialize with the you people. You could do are- some business, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, th- so things have definitely changed since COVID hit, but then I think people are adjusting. What are you doing now? Um, to continue networking mm-hmm. since we've gone through the lockdown now. And I know this kind of ages the podcast a little bit, but we're looking right around springtime of 2021. What, what have you changed uh, moving forward to connect with people? Um, I, I think um, a lot of connections have, have been made, um, you know, pre pre COVID, but as far as right now, um, they're barely, barely going to start opening up that's when you know I'll, I'll be going to to these uh hall of flowers that's a very big event the la- that's probably the last event that i that i went to where i think uh gary v actually spoke in one of those oh yeah yeah uh, yeah those are probably the best if you're in the cannabis industry those shows are probably the best uh places the, where you can network the hall of flower one is that what you said yeah, because it's all just businesses that are uh, that are in the industry. Um, just get all the connection. Where's that located? I I haven't been to that one yet. I've been to a lot of them, especially the M- MJ BizCon. But um, where's that one located at usually? This one's in uh, Santa Rosa. I want to say. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Well, y- you know, Juan, for for those out there that are wanting to get started in cannabis is it too late for them no man that's if you, if the only way to get started is to get started that's, <laughs> that's it. Uh, start with what you have start with the people that you know a lot of people say once i you know um, know this person or once i the people that you are working with uh if you're in the black market the people that are you working with um uh, side by side yeah. those are the the people that are eventually gonna become uh you know it, they could get licensed they you know they could have a different network um than they have now and um you know it, it's always the people that you grow with that hey they become somebody and it's mm-hmm. That's a good point. There, I there was a there's a ton of guys that we were all nothing, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden people just started popping, and you're like, oh yeah, I know him, and it was because you were in the trenches with him, right? You were, yeah. you were, you guys were buying product from each other, or you guys were yeah. putting deals together. Like, well, if we put our money together, we can save on this, and we'll buy a, a large chunk or or whatever, yeah. right? These are things that happen because it's well said when it comes down to the guys around you and the growth is happening around you. And these are the, some of the guys that you're going to be depending on to mm-hmm. create opportunities for yourself. So yeah. 
I, I love that. I love that. Well, Juan, thanks so much for being on the show today, guys. If you want to reach out to Juan, his information is going to be on the blog page. So you can go to plantproblem.com and you can check, click on the episode there and he'll be there and you can contact him there. And Juan, uh, great stuff happening. I, you guys must have, an, you know, the, um, the delivery business I know has always been great. Uh, at least you guys have that happening for you guys out there that are listening and you're like, well, I want to start a delivery business. You know, what was, what would one thing that you would point them in the direction and what they should look out for? Or what should they, sh- what they should do? Build a website. <laughs> okay. So there you go. Get good, That's get good with your computers or find somebody that is good on computers and build your website and get that thing up and running. Juan, thanks so much for being here guys. Thanks so much for listening in to this episode. And we'll see you guys next time. You've just listened to another insightful episode of Plant Problems. If you like what you heard so far, don't forget to tell your friends and colleagues. For additional resources or to leave a review, head over to plantproblem.com. Join us again next week on Plant Problems with Tony Frischconnect. We look forward to having conversations with you as we go along this journey.